I first got the idea for this video because short story curiosity. All over my Instagram, YouTube shorts, TikTok feeds, there were people filming other people's reactions to Saltburn. So I thought, you know what? Let's just watch Saltburn. We'll have a little clippity clip thing going on in whichever corner and you guys can watch me react to me watching Saltburn. No. Absolutely not. That idea is whoof, off the table because I'm pretty sure if I did that, I would quickly, very quickly be banned from YouTube. The reactions I saw from all these other videos are so warranted because whoa. That being said, don't worry. I still filmed myself watching the film. So if you wanted to see that, just stay tuned until the end. I will show them to you, I promise. I won't be doing a full in-depth analysis because I'm an actor. So rather than that, I wanted to focus more on the acting choices and the characters. But if you want a full deep dive analysis of themes and symbolism, etc., in the film, I will link a couple of the videos below that I thought were pretty fascinating. First off, Let's talk about Jacob Elordi's character, Felix Catton. All the characters in Saltburn, I truly felt that Felix was the most genuine character. He's charming, charismatic, quick with a smile, and he seems to be super altruistic with his friendship with Barry Cogan's character all over. However, Felix's kindness was the reason for his downfall. Having a bleeding heart and only wanting to see the best in others, trust me, I get it. It's really hard to see people's true nature until, well, until it's too late. And ultimately that's what happened with him and Oliver. Because Felix leads himself with honesty, he does not tolerate dishonesty, which I felt Jacob Elordi captivated perfectly in this scene when he finally meets Oliver's parents and realizes that everything that Oliver has said about his background was a lie. It's a lie. Forcing a smile, trying to be genial, and really you can tell in his eyes that he just wants to rip Oliver a new one, which I think Jacob Velorde just did a fantastic job of portraying this duality of keeping up appearances while also at the same time deeply hurting on the inside. Felix's character is also not the type to want to rip into someone publicly because he is a genuine, kind person. And so he waits until afterward to tell Oliver to leave. And it was at this point that I think in the film was the major turning point. Without Felix's major character flaw, which is the huge savior complex, Oliver would have not been able to weasel his way within the family and destroy them from the inside, basically. Before watching this film, I totally knew about the bathtub scene. I just didn't think that there would be any scenes worse than that one. And I was wrong, so wrong. Next, we have Venetia Catton. She's Felix's sister and played by Allison Oliver. So Venetia falls prey to Oliver due to her very fragile self-image. Oliver only knew how to take advantage of that because Elspeth and her very big mouth and her love for gossip. He approaches her under the guise of wanting to help her overcome her eating disorder and calling her beautiful and then begins to partake of her monthly cycle. Which, as graphic as that scene is, is a clever tactic by Oliver, well written in, in regards because for so many women, myself included, a menstrual cycle is something that is synonymous with pain and discomfort. For Oliver to call her her beautiful and then proceed to do things. <laughs> You know, it, it, it turns something that is normally a discomfort into something that is pleasurable and that, that can do things. Moving on, Allison's portrayal of Venetia should be highly praised. She took a character that could easily be seen as vapid or one dimensional and gave her so many colors. She seriously took the words off the page and brought this character to life brilliantly. This scene where the Catton family is attempting to have lunch after they had just discovered Felix's body, you see see Venetia just continuously filling her glass till overflowing and it's just an absolute mess which is a symbol on the outside of what she's feeling on the inside. Underlying tension, the barely restrained emotions is simply pure mastery. It, with scenes like this, you see a, a huge tendency for people to overact. Like they just want all the tears to come out. They're, they're just gushing and wailing. They're real tears. What is so much more appealing to watch is when somebody is trying to hold on to those emotions, to try to keep it together, to not show all of their cards. You see that struggle? That's when the audience is gripped in their seats and they really just want to peel back and be like, are you okay? And we have questions for the character. What's going on? Will you tell us more more i really want to applaud allison just for that phenomenal 
performance. Next we have Farley Start, played by Archie Medique. He is a British actor playing an American. This is not me saying that he did not do an American dialect well because he did. There were just some moments in the film where I sat, well, like I caught a couple of mannerisms or a couple of words where I was just like, mm. but that's okay. That aside, his performance was immaculate, especially since his character was there to be juxtaposed against Oliver. He's similar in that he is a leech. His mother is related to the family and therefore because of that relation, he feels entitled that he needs to be taken care of by this super wealthy family. It was genius writing during this karaoke scene where Farley is attempting to humiliate Oliver by having him sing to the song Rent, which has the lines of like, you pay my rent that in order to point out that, hey, Oliver, you're just a freeloader. And the quip from Oliver where he invites Farley to come back and just be like, oh yeah, you relate to this too, dude. It's just this, this clash was very interesting to see unfold. Archie's portrayal of Farley was intriguing and multifaceted and I genuinely felt bad for him at the end. When he gets ousted by the Catton family, therefore giving room for Oliver to really come in. Richard Grant plays Sir James Catton and Sir James is by far my favorite character of the entire film. He has almost this childlike, naive quality about him that's just so endearing to watch. I especially loved when he was so excited about bringing out his suit of armor and wearing it to this birthday party. And that made it even more heartbreaking in the scene where they discovered Felix's body and he was just in absolute denial of the fact and trying to make peace with the fact that his son was gone. It would be easy to label Sir James as aloof or a simpleton, but really I think for his character is a facade. A facade of stupidity or playfulness, childlikeness is a means to let those around him let down their guards and not think too much about him, therefore he gets to see people's true natures more so than maybe other people would have noticed. My theory is that Sir James knew, or if not knew, highly suspected that Oliver was the reason for Felix and Benicia's deaths, which is why he was so adamant that he leave the house to the point of basically writing a give me whatever number you want check to just get him to leave. Sir James was a danger to Oliver's plans, which ultimately I think is why Oliver left and why he left for so many years and didn't come back until Sir James passed away. Now the complete opposite of Sir James was his wife Elspeth, who was played by Rosamund Pike, an absolute brilliant actress. She's shallow and haughty and easily swayed by the sweet words of, ah, you're beautiful, like Oliver was saying to her. And therefore, when Oliver bumps into her and they have that reunion at the end, I just knew imminently that her death was soon to follow. <laughs> and not only that, she signs over their entire estate to Oliver that she would give literally all to the person who destroyed the family is just pure poetry. And now to talk about the reason behind all of the chaos and frankly the disgusting scenes is Oliver Quick. Oliver Quick is played by Barry Cogan and First off, I think of all the films that I have watched, Oliver Quick is probably the most despicable character that I have ever seen. And with that, I genuinely wanna ask Barry, like, are you okay? As actors, we are giving ourselves to these characters, playing with mindsets that we normally wouldn't play with and it can put us into a pretty scary headspace. And so I genuinely hope, Barry, that you are doing well because Oliver was- Real piece of work. And Barry is so deserving of all of the praise that he is receiving for this role. So my first encounter with Barry's acting was in The Banshees of Inishirin, where he played this doe-eyed, innocent young lad. I saw a bit of that in Oliver, like at the beginning, that same kind of quirky, odd, doe-eyed, innocent looking character. But Barry was able to twist it from what he did in Banshees of Inishirin. You just had this sense of foreboding, like something was off at the beginning of the film when you first meet Oliver. What's, what's happening behind those doe-eyed, innocent eyes? and Oliver's obsession with Felix. You know what, on that note, if you have seen the film, you probably know what scene that I'm talking about that happens in a graveyard. That entire scene was improvised. If that's not a perfect example of an actor being able to fully embody a character and give themselves to this character, I don't know what else is because never in a million years would I think to do that as part of an improv exercise. So Oliver was so obsessed with Felix 
that when Felix found out that literally the entire backstory that Oliver gave him, that pity party of, oh, my family is so messed up, when he realized that that was a lie and everything just broke, was the turning point of the film. That was when Oliver just took it a step forward. Originally, I thought his original plan was probably to just get in good with the family, maybe get a snippet of the inheritance, be best friends for life, done. But with Felix finding out that there was a lie and therefore rejecting Oliver and pushing him away, Oliver took it another step towards murder. He was that obsessed with Felix, killed him, and kind of took his place. Feel with the dancing scene at the end of the film, that was him truly marking the house as his own and taking over. Now, as promised, here are my genuine reactions from when I watched the film for the very first time. <laughs> what? Disgusting. Oh, I have so many questions, Emerald. Oh, I don't know if I even want to continue watching. That was really gross. Slurping up the baby batter in um, a bathtub. Smoking some yellows outside. Smoking some yellows outside. Smoking some yellows outside. Oh my gosh, there's still an hour and 15 minutes left in this film, and I am so, so disturbed right now. Oh, for the love of mercy. Are you going to bathe? <laughs> I knew it! That is such an- this is such an odd movie. So those are my thoughts on the film. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you've seen the film, I'd really love to know your opinions in the comments below. I'll catch you next time. I'm a